You know, I'm not going to answer all these questions today. I think I've addressed it already. Uh, I can't remember a lot of the things that transpired 10 or 12 years ago, but um, I stand here uh, in front of everybody apologizing. I know I'm not, uh, I don't have an ounce of, of racism in me. I'm a, a guy that takes pride in leading people together, and I'll continue to do that for the rest of my life. And again, I apologize to D. Smith and anybody out there that, that I have offended. All right, John Gruden, uh, another apology for uh, emails that emerged from 2011. This is during the uh, NFL lockout, a little dispute between the owners. The owners is a lockout, right? So it's the owners locking out the players. That's one of the ironies in this. And he was more critical of D. Smith for the owners locking out the players, although he did have some things to say about Roger Goodell. So uh, John Gruden uh, apologizing again after the game, Michael, and Rod Graves of the, Fritz, of the Fritz Pollard Alliance came out with a great statement. I think it was an absolutely perfect statement on John Gruden. And also, D. Smith had a statement on him as well. I'm just saying that, hey, this is painful. This is one of those situations that, that we got to work through. Rod Graves, look at, I don't know if, I don't know if, how well you know Rod Graves. I know him a little bit, Mike. Very well. I've known him since he's in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. What a guy. Uh, look at, the insensitive remarks made by John Gruden about De Demora Smith are indicative of the racism that exists on many levels of professional sports. Furthermore, it reveals that the journey for African Americans and other minorities in sports is riddled with irrepressible mindsets at the highest level gets better. It is our hope that the league and team ownership will address this matter with a remedy commensurate with these painful words. This is yet another inflection point in a society fraught with cynical social blinders, absent of respect for the intellectual capacity and leadership of minorities. And then <laughs> when will it end? Good job, Rob Graves. Good job, Fritz Pollard Alliance. It's a shame that we got to go there. And D. Smith's statement was great too. Uh, D. Smith saying, "Look, you got to have thick skin in this job." Here it is. Not the first racist comment that I've heard, and it probably will not be the last. This is a thick skin job for someone with dark skin. That's poetic. Just like it always has been for many people who look like me and work in corporate America. Take it larger. Take this and make a larger point. Good job. You know people are sometimes saying things behind your back that are racist, just like you see people talk and write about you using thinly coded and racist language. Racism like this comes from the fact that I'm at the same table as they are. They don't think someone who looks like me belongs. I'm sorry my family has to see something like this, but I would rather they know. I will not let it define me. Mike, um, this story really bothers me. It bothers me because it's got about seven or eight parts to it. And I, I can't get into all seven or eight. We don't have enough time for that. But can I just say, um, as I will be somebody's, I, 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 will, I will sacrifice, I'll make a personal sacrifice. I will be somebody's black friend. <laughs> and the, the black friend you can come to and, and we'll keep it 100 with you. Black friend who will tell you, I don't, don't say that. I'm going to tell you why. Who will tell you not to say that and give you a history lesson. I'll be that black friend who tells somebody who doesn't know better, stop saying I don't have a racist bone in my body. And stop saying you don't have racism in you. And stop saying, well, and I, I can't remember what happened 10 years ago. Racism is not a bone. Racism is a spirit. Racism is an attitude. Racism is all around us. So that's like, that would be like me saying, just for an example, hey, um, I, 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 I couldn't possibly be sexist because I'm married to a woman. I can't possibly be sexist because I have a daughter. I have, so I have a mother. <laughs> yeah. So what? Stop it. Hey, will you... At the, the next person who says, yes, that was racist, and I apologize for it, will be the first that I've heard. 
Wow. Why do people go through race? They, they, they will have racist comments and then say, well, I'm not a racist. John, John Gruden, well, I don't know if you're a racist or not. I don't know if John Gruden is a racist, but I know he said a racist thing. He wrote a racist thing about D. Smith. There's no question. And he may not understand that. And unfortunately, what really bothers me, it, his response bothers me. And the Raiders bother me, the Raiders players. Those who said after the game, well, you know, it was 10 years ago. Or I've dealt with John Gruden and I haven't really noticed anything about him. All right, look. You know what? One of the things that just that just crushes me is that I know I'm speaking. I'm, I'm going to paint with a broad brush here. I'm going to speak with the royal we. And I know everybody is not going to feel it. Everybody's not coming coming along, but I feel confident in saying it. One of the things that bothers me, Mike, is that very often African Americans have their love and their thick skin taken advantage of, have their forgiving spirit, their grace, and their ability to let certain ignorant comments bounce off of them. Very often, we are taken advantage of by those who use that against us. What do I mean by that? I still think of, just to give you an extreme example, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying John Groot, I'm not gonna use that because that'll be, that'll be twisted. I'm not gonna use that extreme example to, to, to redact that from the record. I'll say it simpler. I'm just so tired of being the people who will, who will have the grace to say, yeah, you said something stupid, you said something hurtful, but I forgive you. I know that's a very Christian ethic. It's, it's, the, it's the religion, it's the life that I am trying to live. It's the life that I've devoted myself to. Myself to. But can I be honest, without uh, other Christians throwing their Bibles at me, can I be honest, and sometimes it's exhausting. And sometimes it feels like it's not going anywhere that it's not reciprocated. John Gruden did say a racist thing. And the fact that he said it 10 years ago is part of the story, but the story's not over. Does he realize what he said 10 years ago is racist? And has he made some amends? Has he wrestled with why he said it at that time and then moved on to the point we're at right now? I don't know. He seems very content to let himself off the hook, and so do his players. And it's just really annoying to me. So the last thing I'll say, Mike, on this is that when people go through situations like this, when they, when they make these comments, they'll say, you know, hey, it was said in the heat of the moment, oh, it was a bad time, or uh, I didn't realize what I was doing. That's generally when it happens. Racist remarks usually don't happen when I meet you for the first time and we're exchanging pleasantries. For those who work in corporate America, like both Rod Graves and D. Smith alluded to, when you work in corporate America, what happens like the gut punch. You're sitting there, you're chilling on a corporate retreat and somebody says something. You're out at a night at the bar and everybody's relaxed and then it comes up. Or you get emotional, there's an argument, and then it comes out. That's when they usually come out in emails, in angry, emotional emails, or in moments hmm, where somebody really. feels like, I can take my mask off, I got my guard down, that's when it comes out. So, I'm not really, I'm not ready, I'm not ready to forgive John Gruden because I don't think he is, I don't think he gets the weight of what he says, and I don't believe him. I don't think his apology is genuine. I think his apology is transactional. I think it's checking a box. So until, he's, until he comes correct, I'm all set with John Gruden, and I'd like to see the NFL, as Rod Graves said, I'd like the NFL 
I like to see the NFL make a strong statement. Oh, one more thing, one more thing. Real quick, real quick, Mike. We're taking his word for the emails. I believe the Wall Street Journal has seen the emails and the league office has. We don't know what's in those emails. John Gruden is our, John Gruden is our reporter and our editor right now. So I'd like to see them before I say what the intent is of John Gruden. This story is not over. We've got a, we've, we're seeing these things through a Wall Street Journal, John Gruden prism, but I think I need to see the entirety of what he brought in 2011 to really understand what we're talking about. So a couple of things I want to wrap this conversation up with, if I may. Um, the had it not been leaked, had Gruden and his email not been exposed, had his true colors not be not been revealed. You know, the voice that I've had in my head since Friday, um, when this broke, I think it broke, if I'm not mistaken, either right at the end of your show or yes. right after your end show. End of the show. End of so the show. I, so I knew. So I knew that there'd be plenty to talk about um, today. I have Ice Cube's voice in my head. I have the beginning of no Vaseline in my head. Here's what they think about you. Here's what they think about you. Here's what they think about you. Because we just so happened to be privy to what John Gruden was dumb enough to put in a work email. This, I don't believe that this was isolated for John Gruden. I don't believe this was out of character for John Gruden. And that is the fear. That's the reality that we as black people, that minorities have to deal with in this society. That this is what they say. Either to themselves or one another when they're around friends. See, racists are the least qualified to diagnose whether or not they have a quote unquote racist bone in their body. Very few racists, and most of them were at the Capitol on January 6th, but very few racists actually loudly and proudly self identify as racists. So what you had yesterday was John Gruden standing defiantly in his whiteness and saying, I'm not a racist. That's all there is to it because clearly he done all the self reflection, all the diagnosis, all the internal, you know, considerations to determine a white man is going to sit up here and determine I'm not racist. That's not your place. Clearly you are. And that's the and, and, and before we could ever get to a point as a society in general or a league in particular to be able to eradicate this type of thinking. We first have to come to a place where we recognize that this is not subjective. This is not a matter of opinion. You don't get to stand at a podium and say I'm not racist because I coach black people or I work with black people. So that makes me not racist and I'm done answering questions about it. That is the epitome of white male privilege. That you can determine when the conversation begins and ends. And I've lived it. You've lived it. We all live it again. Most of them aren't dumb enough to put it on paper. Most of them are dumb enough to leave a paper trail. But how many times, how many decisions, how many promotions, how many terminations, how many raises, how many pay cuts, how many evaluations are rooted in this kind of thinking? Because for me, it wasn't just the rubber lips. The rubber lips was just so like, okay, man, rubber, really? Like, uh, not, rubber, not rubber lips, the, the lips as big as Michelin, Michelin. tires, okay? She's talking Michelin. about his, about his right. big lips. Right. Like it's big, it's big. Okay, right. really? Like okay, you know, we don't we doing that? For me, what was more problematic, okay. if I may, 
if I may, what was yeah. more problematic was the dumb, the intellect. Because that's why we're still having a conversation about black coaches. That's why there's still racist yes. stereotypes still being attached to black quarterbacks. That's why there are so few black general managers. That's why there are so few black men and women CEOs and CFOs. That's why the easiest job for a black person to get in corporate America nowadays is director, director of diversity and inclusion with all due respect to the brothers and sisters holding down in that position. Right. Because there are so many people who ascribe and subscribe to this type of thinking who just don't say it, but they act on it in their own ways. And I put a lot of money on a bet that at some, at some point in John Gruden's career, he has acted on this type of thinking, whether or not it manifested itself in its substantial consequences, I don't know. Who's to say? But everything from grades to bank loans to selling your house to mortgages to job applications to police encounters is all rooted in this type of thinking that just doesn't get said. He said the quiet part out loud, as they say. He said the quiet part yeah. out loud. Because how many owners were saying the same damn thing about Demora Smith? How many owners say the same damn thing about players, coaches, and GMs? How many of them say the same things when they're at their owners' meetings and they're sitting around the bar? How many, how many executives have said the same thing about you, Michael, or the same thing about me, or the same thing about brothers and sisters who look, who, who act like, as Demora said, who have the nerve to not only want a seat at the table, but want to build the table. Right, right. Or right. as the case may be, right. bring our own chair to said table. So for me, I don't even care what happens to John Gruden because unfortunately, Rod Graves, there is nothing that can be done to John Gruden that is commiserate with this kind of pain because it's bigger than John Gruden, it's deeper than John Gruden. And the last thing I'll say, because we got company on the other side, I don't want to go too long. Real leadership, you want to talk about leadership? Real leadership is not sitting up there saying, I'm not racist, I ain't got a racist bone in my body. I apologize for anybody I may have offended. I'm done answering questions about it. Real leadership Terrible is saying, apology. you know what? Because it wasn't an apology. It was more of an acknowledgement, if anything. Real leadership is saying, I got work to do. I got work to do. I got, re I got re some reflection I need to do. I sent it at the time. I remember sending it. The, my, the why doesn't matter. That I, yeah. that I sent that, I'm embarrassed, right. and clearly, I need to do some work on John Gruden. Not only am I sorry for the people I hurt, but I'm hurt, I'm embarrassed, I'm wounded, looking back and saying that was me that said that, because, because since, I, since it was so long ago, in that time, I've come to a better place of enlightenment. But I got work to do. Instead, I ain't got a racist bone in my body, which is the maiden call for racists. Most racists, yeah. it's on their business stop saying card. That. I don't have a race. I don't have a racist bone in my body. Stop saying, please so. stop saying that. Now stop saying I don't have a racist bone in my body. Some of my best friends are. Uh, look, look. Let me let me trot out somebody. Fill in the blank. Let me trot out a woman, who's gonna prove that I'm not sexist. Let me try. Let me trot out a black person, who's gonna prove. Uh, that I'm I'm not racist. Let me let me trot out somebody from a different religion. Somebody who's a Jew. Hey, hey, I'm not I'm not uh, anti-Semitic. I'm not I'm not uh, I, I, I'm not uh, anti-Islam. Whatever it is, stop doing that. Stop doing that. That is so condescending, and it just misses the point entirely. You're absolutely right. I don't know what's going to happen to him. All right. But he is. I don't. Not, it doesn't matter. He has not reached the point. He, he's going. He's not reached the point of reflection. He is he's going to come and go. He's going to come and go, for one reason or another, and there will still be white people, talking, thinking, and most of all, acting on this type of thinking. And making an example of John Gruden, not sure if that's much of a deterrent, or enough of a deterrent.
but here we are. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.